Okay, so here we are. We are going to look at some other integration techniques, and there's lots of different techniques that are available to us. Let's take a look at this one. This question comes with a hint to split the fraction in two. That's one of the techniques that we have. And so what we can do is we can take this integral, take it and break it into two parts, because this bottom of the fraction, 5 over x over 1 minus x squared plus 3 over 1 minus x squared dx dx. I could do it like this, or if I even want to, I don't even have to write it as an integral like this. I can just do it simply as this kind of scenario and just integrate it all at once. The reason why I can do this is because now I have several techniques that I can apply. I can apply a technique to this particular fraction and to this fraction. If I look here, I can think about this as being written as 5x times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. The chain rule, if I take the derivative of this inside 2, will become some kind of an x squared, just the coefficient will be different. This one here, though, is going to be an arc sine scenario because it's just where there's no x up top and I just have square root of 1 minus x squared. So plus 3 over 1 minus x squared dx. So let us do a little work here. And so when I take the integral of this, it's 1 minus x squared add one to my exponent, gives me a positive one half. I'm going to m divide by one half, which is the same as multiplying by two. I have a five there, that's still there. And the x though, is gonna be part of the chain rule, but I have to counteract the two x that'll come out. And so that'll be, will cancel and it's just five times 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. When I do this one, that's simply going to be 3 arc sine x over a, which is 1. So plus 3 arc sine x plus c. Okay, so this technique is all about splitting the fraction in two, and you have to recognize that the square root of the bottom leads to a potential arc sine scenario if there's no x on top, or potentially u substitution if there is an x on top. Let's try another example. So for this one here, the hint is to split the fraction in a clever way, looking for u substitution. Well, one of the things that I recognize if this bottom, if I use a chain rule scenario for a u substitution, this bottom part of the function, when I take the derivative, will be 2x plus 5, which is not 10x plus 21, any factor. But it's almost, if I multiply by 5, it's then going to be 10x plus 25. And that's 4 less than that. So what I could do is I could rewrite this as 10x plus 25 minus 4. That's the same thing over x squared plus 5x plus 8 dx. And now that I've rewritten as such, then I can go even further and say that I have the integral of 10x plus 25 over x squared plus 5x plus 8 dx minus the integral of 4 over x squared plus 5x plus 8 dx. And doing these integrals, I know this one here somehow has to turn into an arctangent. To do it, I'll have to complete the square. Whereas the right, the left-hand side, rather, the one that I'll put here in red, this one here,
can be a u substitution. So let for this red one, let's make u equal to x squared plus 5x plus 8. So du then is 2x plus 5 dx. That does not look like this yet. I have to multiply by 5. And so it's 10x plus 25 dx. Now I can substitute it in. The 5 is a coefficient. I'll pull out front. And this will be 1 over u du. Integrating that part simply becomes equal equal to 5 ln u, which is 5 substitute my u back, x squared plus the 5x plus 8. That's the one half of my integral that I'm doing. The other half now then, switching over to purple, this one here. I'm going to have to use arctangent x. So in order to use the arctangent, oh, I'll take my 4 and pull it outside. So it's my coefficient, and I don't like them to mess me up. I'm going to complete the square of this. And this is x. I take half of this value, which is 5 over 2. Square it. Now, inside this calculation, though, I've added 25 over 4, so I must subtract 25 over 4, plus 8, which is 32 over 4 dx, which is negative 4, integral of 1 over x plus 5 half squared, plus 7 over 4 dx. Now I have it in my arctangent form. It looks just like this. And I can use it. And this becomes equal to negative 4 times 1 over a. a is going to be the square root of 7 over 2 arctangent x plus 5 over 2 over a, which is root 7 over 2. There's my integral. I just tidy it up and attach it onto here. Minus 4. And this, if I flip it, times 2 over root 7 arctangent and this will be 2 x plus 5 halves over root 7 plus c and finally putting all together hopefully 5 ln x squared plus 5 x plus 8 minus 5 root 7 this 8 times root 7 is negative 8 root 7 over 7, arctangent 2x plus 5 over root 7 plus c. And that is my antiderivative. And my technique here was taking the fraction, break it up in parts, and doing a clever u substitution.